Guten Tag und Willkommen! This is CNB, I am Siddharth Vinayak Patankar. Welcome to a brand new episode. I am in Stuttgart, in Schwabia, in southern Germany this week. Now, of course, Stuttgart is synonymous with Mercedes-Benz. The three-pointed star lives here and is one of the largest citizens of this entire region. And uh, CNB loyalists will, of course, no doubt remember. We've been here many times before, but I am back here for a very special reason. The company is celebrating a very special milestone. It is 40 years of the GE wagon. And we've recently had the G350D getting launched in India. So that review is coming up. But it's a special tribute that is ongoing for this model here at the headquarters that we'll begin with. The Mercedes-Benz Museum opened in May 2006 and is one of the most recognizable structures in Stuttgart's skyline. Located bang at the heart of Mercedes-Benz manufacturing and its management headquarters, this is a new museum as Daimler previously had a museum located inside the factory. Its Felix-like structure and very prominent architecture are unique. But it's about what's inside this building, really. I have been here before, and yet I'm happy to be back. Why? Because the museum's many exhibits keep on changing. And you get to see rare cars that you may not have seen on your last visit. So it's always fun coming back. The large building offers 178,000 square feet of exhibition space and always has about 160 cars on display at any given time. The time capsule-like elevators take you to the top and you travel downwards through time as it were since the museum has its oldest exhibits right at the very top. So right from the first car ever to the first four-wheeled one. After all, this is the brand that can boast the world's very first automobile, don't forget. Going all the way back to 1885. As you descend down, you see the glorious vintage cars that followed initial setbacks after the First World War, including the very first car to sport the name Mercedes. Sexier, sportier and faster. Good way to describe some of these cars that came in the late 1920s, but what's specifically different about them is the fact that they're also badged Mercedes-Benz for the first time because the two companies, Daimler and Benz, had to come together. They tried very hard to recover from World War I and, uh, you know, they tried diversifying, doing things like sewing machines and bicycles and typewriters, but it wasn't enough. And which is why to survive, they had to merge. And lucky for us, because we got to see some stunning cars that followed, including something like this. Very grand, very opulent, again, very fast. The Type SS, this particular one, becomes a little special for me because it's a car that was also sold to the Maharaja of Kashmir, and so, yes, made its way to India. SS stands for Super Sports, and this car used a drilled six-cylinder engine with nearly 200 bhp of power and a top speed of 190 kilometers per hour. There are many more gems to see, but I always gravitate to the car that people at the museum will tell you is probably the most photographed car here. Yes, it is cliched to say it is one of my favorites, but it really is gorgeous. The dream car of the 1950s, the 300SL Coupe with its dramatic gull wing doors. 
another six-cylinder beast with 215 horses and 260 kilometers per hour top speed. Wow! And that red interior is oh so special. The museum also houses the company's top technologies and I was particularly interested in the green cars and concepts built over the years. Everything from hydrogen fuel cells to biofuel and of course electrics and hybrids. And my other key area of interest, vehicle safety. Crumple zones, something that all cars now have as standard, well, have had for several years. First time ever from Mercedes-Benz in 1959. And uh, well, it's also amongst the first brands to start crash testing for all of its new vehicles. And uh, we do have to thank the company because there are other things as well that became standard in other cars, thanks to some of the work being done here. 1981, airbags, 1978, ABS, both of which now thankfully are standard in India too. And then there are the other special exhibits halfway down that keep on changing. They follow various themes like technology or even design or commemorate special cars in the Daimler heritage. I am lucky to be able to see the new exhibition for the G-Wagon or G-Class of SUVs, the most capable and premium car in its category for many. 2019 is the year when the Gelände Wagen, as it's called in German, the G-Class All-Terrain, has turned 40 years old. And in these 40 years, there's a remarkable fact, every car made, well, almost every car made, is still running somewhere in the world. In fact, they're confident that more than 80% of those cars that have been produced over these 40 years are still in operation, still in working condition, and that's pretty remarkable. And uh, if you visit Stuttgart in the next six months, there's a special exhibit dedicated to this car at the Mercedes-Benz Museum. Special one-offs and all the production updates on the G, you'll see it all here. It's a very cool exhibit and one all G-Wagon fans must come and see if they can. And so I simply had to show it to you since I was here at the museum. Now Daimler is one of the biggest employers in this area, no doubt about that. And this particular campus houses not just the headquarters, not just the museum, but also the oldest plant in the company's history. Very special place to visit as a result. A short break here on CNB, back with the G350D. So remember, if you're in Stuttgart before the 19th of April next year, 40 years of the G-Wagen, a very special exhibit, certainly worth a visit, as is the rest of the museum, of course. Now it is time to take you and show you the latest car, the one that's just launched back home. And I had a chance to drive it just before I got onto a flight to come over here, the G350D review. <music> If you turn back time and look in the history books, there have only been a handful of cars that have stood the test of time. And without a doubt, the Mercedes-Benz G-Class is one such car. Interestingly, the G-Wagon is in its second generation since 2018, despite being a 40-year-old model. Developed as a military vehicle and then put into civilian use, the G-Wagon has been one of the longest produced vehicles in Daimler's history. And India has had its fair share of these monsters. But this time, things are a bit different. Now, this is the first time that we've got the regular G-Wagon in India. And why do I say that? Well, with the previous generation, we had several iterations, but they were all from the AMG stable. So yes, we always had an AMG version of the car previously. And it's the first time that we've got the regular G-Class. Now, it's interesting that Mercedes-Benz chose to bring us the 350D. It is quite the beast that it's meant to be, and so it gives you 600 Nm of torque. I am going to highlight that figure simply because 
when you take it out into the wilderness and go where no one else wants to, this car has the grunt to get you there, get you across and back. To make things a little more interesting, the car with us also sports a customized look courtesy the brand new G Manufacturer Personalization Program. It takes off from Mercedes-Benz Designer Customization but keeps it specific to the G only. And a million configurations are possible, says the company. That stylish matte black paint shade officially called the Night Black Magno is downright menacing, isn't it? and oh so sexy too. As part of the night package, the SUV is also equipped with a set of 20-inch AMG multi-spoke light alloy wheels painted in glossy black, adding that extra bit of deadly attitude. The car still has the retro-style push-button door handles and exposed hinges for the doors. The shape may seem squarish, but look closer and you'll see the rounded edges, the immaculate fit and finish, and the modern elements like LED lighting and daytime running lights. Now, the car is big, yet it looks lithe and taut. At over 4,817 mm long, 1931 mm wide and 1969 mm tall, that is pretty humongous. But all that bulk packs in tremendous off-road capability. The G-Wagon's reputation is built on that capability and not its luxury or looks. The second generation carries that forward with ease and aplomb. So we went off the beaten track and found a meadow hill site to give things a go. While not nearly a true test of its real capability, the G350D lapped it all up with effortless ease. When things do get hairy, making your life comfortable off-road are three special buttons which activate the three different levels of the car's four-wheel drive along with a dedicated low-range button down along the lower central console. Now, the G-Wagon is certainly a big SUV. In fact, it weighs over 2,400 kilos and that is really heavy. And with that weight, it goes from 0 to 100 in 7.4 seconds, which is really fast for an SUV of this size. What's more is that it also gets a very capable all-wheel drive system with three different levels, similar to the AMG sibling, which allows the SUV to go on any kind of terrain without breaking a sweat. But what's amusing here, though, is Mercedes is also offering an eco mode, which comes with a coasting function. What that does is essentially allows the vehicle to cruise for longer duration even after you have taken your foot off the accelerator. This helps to save some amount of fuel when you are doing long highway runs or in city traffic. Yes, any fuel saved is a good thing, isn't it? The transmission duties are handled by Mercedes' tried and tested 9-speed 9G Tronic automatic gearbox with paddle shift, which is nicely calibrated to adjust the shift ranges according to the driving mode and terrain or traction mode that you're in. The adaptive adjustable damping makes things easier for those in the car. You can also shift between three models, Eco, Comfort and Sport. Now, don't forget, India did get the second generation G earlier in its more potent avatar, the powerful Mercedes AMG G63. Development of the G Wagon goes all the way back to 1973, though the first production car for civilian use, well, that came out in 1979, 40 years ago. And in fact, it was almost 40 years to that date when we got the second generation of this car, the W463. Now, the code name has remained the same across the two generations. And the cars kind of look very similar too. If you look at this, you still know it's a G-Wagon straight away. But there are huge changes under the skin. So while the overall styling remains the same, there are certain elements on that styling that are new. Lighting technologies for sure. And then of course, from the inside out, it's a safer, more modern, more technologically advanced car for sure. Now, the AMG version of this car came to us exactly a year before the G350D. So yes, October 2018 is when we got this one. And uh, of course, visually, they are very similar for sure, but there are certain AMG-like styling changes that are kind of obvious when you look at the car up close. But the big change, of course, is under the hood. Now, think about it. The G350D is fairly powerful to begin with, but uh, the G63 has over twice more horsepower than this one. 
and 850 nm of peak torque. While the AMG G63 gets the bold Panamericana grille, the G350D comes with Mercedes' signature three-slat grille with a three-pointed star at the center in both cases. Both also get the classic round headlamps with LED projector units and ring of LED daytime running lamps. The AMG version also gets a beefier front bumper with black skid plate instead of the silver ones on the G350D. Most importantly, the G63 also comes with a quad exhaust system with the mufflers coming out of the sides which has been given a miss in the G350D. But on the inside, it's a lot more similar. The G350D gets the same dashboard design, infotainment screens and overall styling and even the seating layout as the more powerful sibling. Like we said earlier though, this one has the special G manufacturer individualized package with the seats upholstered in Bengal red and black Napa leather with matching interior. It also gets a wide 12.3 inch high resolution display for the infotainment system that runs the command online interface. But there's no MBUX on this one. The system offers access to a ton of functions that the SUV offers like ventilated massage seats, the three zone climate control, navigation, mobile phone connectivity with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and of course the vehicle's dynamic settings. So what of the price? It is after all the more affordable G-Wagon now in India, isn't it? At 1 crore 50 lakh rupees, it is 69 lakh rupees cheaper than the AMG version but at that price, it is still for the chosen few. But if you have the cash and you want not just a car that's luxurious, well-built, brimming with tech, extremely capable, but also an icon of modern automobile engineering, then the G-Class is your baby. Great to drive, a head-turner, quick, effortless on any surface, and immensely satisfying with its commanding view of the road or well off-road, that in a nutshell is the G-Wagon and the new G350D does plenty to retain that reputation as it holds up the model line's glorious heritage and celebrates its story. And that's a wrap here on CNB. How did you like our G special? Please react to it. Please always wear your seatbelts and please join me next week. Off be the Zen.